Hello everyone, 4Arcade here, and here is why you shouldn't get the iPhone 14. Two and a half weeks ago, as of time of recording, Apple showcased the new AirPods Pro, the new Apple Watch lineup, including the Apple Watch SE, the Apple Watch 8 and the Apple Watch Ultra, along with the new iPhone lineup. Apple presented the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Plus, the iPhone 14 Pro, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max released were incredible new phones, with a new processor always on display and the new dynamic island, whereas the base 14 model and 14 Plus had barely any new features. In fact, this can be seen in the Apple event where Apple talked about the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus for just about 11 to 12 minutes, whereas Apple talked about the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max for almost 25 minutes straight out of the 1 hours and 33 minute event. In fact, there are so few differences from last year's iPhone 13 that I would actually recommend it over the new iPhone 14, since now the price of the iPhone 13 is at $730 instead of the iPhone 14's $830. In this video, I'll go through all the differences I could find between these two generations of iPhones, and you can decide if it is worth an extra $100. Let's start with the processor. Ever since the first iPhone, Apple has always put a new processor in their new iPhones, except this year, where the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus received the same A15 processor as last year's iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max did. Hence, in comparison with the iPhone 13, the only difference in processing is that we get a 5-core GPU instead of a 4-core GPU. Another difference between the two generations is the better gyroscope Apple put in the iPhone 14 in order for them to be able to add crash detection. During the event, Apple focused heavily on their two new safety features, which was this infamous crash detection and their new satellite SOS. This feature allows users to send a distress signal if they don't have cellular connection via satellite. It's pretty cool but it currently only works in the US and in Canada, so if you live anywhere else, don't really count as a feature. Most of the differences between the two phones is of course the camera. Apple introduced what they call the Photonic Engine, which is technically just a new image processing software that enables more light to be captured by the phone's lenses, which in theory should produce better nighttime shots. In my opinion, the best new feature on the iPhone 14 is Apple's new action mode, which is just their new image stabilization for videos. If you film while running a lot or jumping or overall in shake environments, this is a useful feature, but most people won't use it very often, especially since it impairs on image quality and resolution. In addition, cinematic mode that was released last year with the iPhone 13 now gets an option to film in 4K instead of 1080p. One thing I believe that is actually better on the iPhone 13 is the presence of a physical SIM tray. Since the whole iPhone 14 lineup completely removed the SIM tray in exchange for eSIM. No SIM tray has indeed some benefits, but overall I believe it will cause more inconveniences. If you prefer eSIM, there is no need to get the iPhone 14 specifically since the iPhone 13 provides it as an option alongside having a physical SIM card. In addition, the main and front cameras actually have a smaller aperture on the iPhone 14 than on the iPhone 13 according to the Apple website and Apple also claims that the iPhone 14 has a slightly better battery life over its predecessor. Finally, the reason why you shouldn't get the iPhone 14 is the absence of a USB-C port. Now, I know that the iPhone 13 doesn't have USB-C either, but there are very high chances the next iPhone will receive USB-C due to the European Union's new law which requires all devices to have the latest USB cable. If you're planning to keep your new phone for as long as possible, you should maybe consider getting the next iPhone if the iPhone 14 is indeed going to be the last with lightning. And just one more thing, the iPhone 14 has Bluetooth 5.3 instead of 5.0. Well, it's finished. These are all the differences between the two generations of iPhones. If you decided that all these features are worth $100, it's your choice, go for the iPhone 14. If you're willing to pay more than $1,000 for an iPhone, you should maybe go for the iPhone 14 Pro or even the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But if you're not going to pay more than a grand for a phone, 
and these features are not worth $100 to you, just get the iPhone 13 at $730 or even the iPhone 13 mini which is at $630. Or you just don't get the iPhone 14 and wait to see what comes out next year. Be sure to check out the links down in the description below. Thank you for watching, for Arcade signing off.